With establishment doors being slammed in his face, Kanye appeared to see himself as something like a vigilante, a superhero of sorts, the one guy brave enough to kick down those doors so others could follow his path. He was the one guy unwilling to accept the no's he heard his entire life, the one guy who believed in himself so much that he was willing to publicly compare himself to Walt Disney, to Steve Jobs, to Shakespeare, to Jesus himself. I am the number one most impactful artist of our generation. I am Shakespeare in the flesh. Walt Disney, Nike, where just like that, when someone comes up and says something like, I am a god, everybody says, who does he think he is? I just told you who I thought I was. A god. I just told you. That's who I think I am. Would it have been better if I had a song that said, I am a nigga? Or if I had a song that said, I'm a gangster? Really quick backstory. In 2010, regarded as one of the greatest albums of all time, has one of the greatest songs of all time, it was a huge apology for what he did in 2009. Taylor Swift, Obama called him a jackass. He ran off to Hawaii, brought a bunch of people on, hid in isolation, and then came out with this album, one of the greatest ever. And then after that, he did Watch the Throne, also a really good album. And then he got the girl of his dreams, Kim Kardashian. They had a kid, and I think they got married in that same time frame. It seemed like everything was going great for him. He felt he accomplished everything he could do, that he hit the glass ceiling. And now he wants to venture off into product. He wants to own a fashion line. He wants to get into fashion. He wants to do that. But it seems like nobody's fucking letting him. They won't let him in the fashion shows. People are hating on his first Yeezy line. They just nobody was giving him connections or anything nobody was letting him into the fashion world nike wasn't giving him his royalties for his fucking jeezy shoe which was one of the biggest shoes at that time no one was fucking with him when it come to fashion in 1965 bob dylan was the leading songwriter of the american folk music revival the response to his albums the freewheeling bob dylan and the times they are changing led the media to label him the spokesman of a generation in March of 1965, Dylan released his fifth album. Side 1 features him backed by an electric band, while Side 2 features him accompanying him himself on acoustic guitar. On July 20th, 1965, he released his single, Like a Rolling Stone, featuring a rock sound. On July 25th, 1965, he performed his first electric concert at the Newport Folk Festival with his rock sound and his electric guitars in the first part of his new album, and he was looked at as a spokesperson of a generation in the American folk music revival. He went to this concert. The first song he played was with an electric guitar. And the booze, they tried to play louder than the booze, but once he stopped playing, once the song was over, the boos were louder than what the fuck the speakers were outputting when he was playing the song. And Bob Dylan only played three songs that night. Everybody hated him after that. They called him a Judas. I hope that's not a slur. I don't know what it means, but that's what they call him. Today, that is one of the most influential albums ever. Today, that is an amazing album. They hated him at first because it was different. It was almost like a complete turnaround for what he was known for. I mean, I don't know if rock is the opposite of folk. I mean, it's both guitars, right? He did something that no one has seen before. He did something that was so weird, you couldn't even wrap your head around it. So everyone just hated it, you know? Instead of trying to understand it, you just start off by, what the fuck is this? This shit is stupid. Whole lot of red. That is Jesus. Kanye was known for this inspirational gospel type rap. It wasn't like Christian rap or anything. He wasn't just like only talking about God and she was still talking about, he wasn't talking about killing niggas and, and, and fucking bitches and getting money. He was talking about his car crash and gold diggers and his, his grave ship shit. He was talking about him wanting to make it one day. He was talking about how people are obsessed with materialistic items. He was talking about all of these different things. He was talking about how school is fucking stupid. He was talking about things that people didn't talk about. That's what Jesus is. No one was ready for it. We were ready for Jesus walks in through the wire because it still had a sound similar to what the fuck was going on in rap at the time. It still had 
a same type of sound there's still kick drums and shit there's still rap but Yeezus was so different that the whole community had to come together and just hate it and now look at it today niggas like me who were like 11 years old when this shit came out only heard one song on the radio black skinhead is is influenced by it there are way more niggas influenced by it. i'll put up pictures some of them might be wrong but you can't say that you don't see kanye in in those travis scott forces with with the metal nike sign you can't say that you don't see yeezus and and things today in art today that bodacious attitude of i'm better than everyone else and no one can't tell me anything i'm going to make what the fuck i want because i know in 10 years is going to be one of the most influential pieces of the time we see that in everyone now i'm not saying that's all because of kanye but i am 100 percent saying that he opened the doors for black people to do more than just shut up and dribble shut up and rap he opened those fucking doors the fashion world didn't want him nike said he can't get royalties because he's not an athlete only athlete gets royalties i don't know how i'm gonna cut this video down into five minutes but i'll try pink, pink. Waste my time